I, I, I could never imagine my life being where it is at this moment, at this time, live, right here, right now. Hello everyone, it's Karina again from Break Fear, Find Freedom, and I'm sure you all remember Richard Ozuna. Today is our third conversation. Hello Richard, and Hello. we're going to be speaking about something that's really, I just love, and if you've been following me, you know I love synchronicities. I don't believe in coincidence. And it was Richard's birthday um, a few days ago, and not that was this birthday came a lot of surprises and actually made the beauty the birthday even more special and from there we'll continue the conversation so sit back relax and grab your coffee because you don't want to miss this one hello richard how are you today <laughs> <laughs> i'm doing well karina thank you so much you know um I, I i gotta say you know i've been i've been very fortunate and blessed in, in many ways. And I never, I, I, I could never imagine my life being where it is at this moment, at this time, live, right here, right now. Everything that I that I went through in the past, through, through my recovery, and uh, actually through my active addiction, I didn't understand why I was chosen to go through so much defeat, pain, loss, just putting myself in situations and being the the black mark as they call it of the family the black sheep of the family that everybody didn't want to be with because i had that lifestyle part of it was it grabbed me part of it was because i loved it part of it was i was trying to get away from it part of it it was following me part of it was i would wake up and it would welcome me hello richard how are you doing i'm going to be with you all day it may take a week may take a month may take a year but i may affect you for the rest of your life or not i cannot be more thankful to the people that have been so beautiful loving kind to me and have helped me along the way. I never want to forget that. So on Wednesday, May 29th, 2024, I turned 61 years old. Happy birthday, Richard. Thank well, you. <laughs> Thank you. And you, you know, it's like this. I didn't know if I was going to make it to 21, 22. I, it's so to be at this time, wake, awake, breathing and sober. Wow. But I want to reflect on that sobriety point right here and right now, because on that day, it wasn't about me on that night. It wasn't about me on May 29th, on May 29th, 2024, my son graduated from a rehab program with the year recovery, he received his cake and his one year chip. Hmm. And my daughter and I, thank you, thank you. Beautiful. And being at a very young age and a very young t uh, teenager in the area that we lived, it's like once you pick up something, the, the severity of it all on charges they don't like to let go. They like to label people with big, big charges. And so my son got caught up with everything and it just, it, it kind of, I, I, I watched him spiral out of control. Just when I thought that he was gonna be okay, he had a job, he was, you know, he, he was able to hang on to a job for a little bit. It was a great paying job doing what he was doing and it felt good picking him up and, you know, waking up, waking him up in the morning and knowing he wasn't out doing anything, but taking him to work and then picking him up or, um, mm -hmm. but then I remember the times when I had got the phone call because he had overdosed, he was called from the emergency room or the nurse called or the times I would get a call that he was at a party, he was at a function and they found him out in the street overdosed. And I was the one that would go pick him up wherever he was at. 
searching for my son because I thought he died in the desert day after day after day until someone found him in the desert. So I know the pain, I know the anguish, I know the, the worry, but I didn't give up on my son. Mm -hmm. So seeing him on that day on stage with his speech, watching him in all his glory and the way he just presented and to hear testimonials from other men that turned to my son and said, you have been an inspiration to me. You've mentored me through my troubled time here mm -hmm. and how they look up to him and how he, he was an, he's, he's an example and leads by example was truly one of the most incredible breathtaking moments that I just, I lost it. So proud of my son and was just such a beautiful, beautiful evening. And to have family there and um, a family that was once one, even though we're not together, we, we all came together, my partner and I, we all came together to say, hey, we're here for my son. Wow, that is beautiful as well. And for everybody to be at one table sitting and eating and discussing and laughing and having fun and seeing my grandson, everybody at the table, generation, generation, and people just meeting each other for the first time and being okay with it, being adults about it, that's what mm -hmm. life is about. Because mm -hmm. it is so important that unity, especially for someone who's in recovery, that there is no outside chaos. There is no outside bad ill will, negativity being bestowed on anyone who's in recovery, whether it's one year, one month, one day, 21 years, makes no difference. It's unacceptable. We were just adults being adults, honoring a human being that is truly deserving of this time. And I couldn't be more proud of my son. So that's where my focus was on the 29th. I didn't, I didn't even know we were going to dinner. My daughter asked me, let's go to, you know, dad, let's all go to dinner. I'm, 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 you know, what do you, what are you guys doing tonight? I go, we were going to go out and go do something else. And we all, we all got together and it was just one of, it, it was a great feeling. Um, and to see my, to, to see my son send me pictures, um, on the baseball field, him in the bus, smiling away, just loving life and enjoying life. Coming back from coming back from San Diego, they were in San Diego playing a softball tournament. So yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I'm going. Wow, this is so cool. This is so cool because you know I've um, I've witnessed him get to a point in high school trying out for the football team. He was going through hell week, had his gear, had his helmet, had his cleats. He was all ready to go. He was doing his thing with blah, 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 blah. Tryouts came. The coach and everybody cut him because of his past, because of his record. Oh. That's when I saw him completely, completely just give up. So, wow. to see, to see him on a team playing baseball, I was just like, well, yes, yes, this is you. <laughs> so, you know, you, you, you just never know. And um, I, I, I hope you don't mind me saying, um, I would much rather you say this, Karina, but I will just let you know that I just want to mention this because I want to I want to transition into our next conversation and what we discussed and it was um, this has a lot to do with what's happening right now. It's beautiful. And that when people are in recovery and I and I mean everybody in recovery, however you recover is your right. Your way of recovery is never the wrong way. And for people that are outside 
to comment on one's recovery because they're recovering one way, but they want to bash you in recovering their way, but you're doing it wrong, is another topic very, very high on my list that I discuss all the time on my on my Instagram page and, and on Facebook. We're talking about the naysayers, the ones that are throwing negative daggers at you, the ones that are throwing comments and, you know, um, who do you think you are recovering without a program? Who are you recovering self-motivated? You should be in a group. You should have a sponsor. You should do this. You should read the big book. I just listened and I think I lost a lot of I lost a lot of people on social media because I recovered that way. But the funny thing here is I've always been respectful to everybody. I knocked on AA's doors in the valley because I wanted to speak. They declined me. They turned me away. Because I, I I'm not familiar with the with with the big book. And I'm honest about it because I recovered differently. But get a load of this. I respect everyone in AA. I respect what you do because if you, if it takes, if it takes a group, it takes a sponsor and it takes a mentor, it takes a setting for you to become accountable and, and you feel you need that, then by all means, because my son needed this. My son needed structure in this way. My son did not recover the way I did. And I didn't expect him to. I let the chips lay where they would. Um, I just want to stop you for a moment. Sorry, um, Richard, I don't want to, because I, I, I want to go back to your story of your son before we go into the other thing. Um, I, the, the 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 support that you had that you gave him uh, you know it was uh, that the, the whole family was there to support him that was beautiful and that you could put aside possible um your own your own agendas for that time and be together with him was an amazing feat already and 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 him feeling that support obviously and I, and I can't speak for him I'm just talking as I'm as I'm looking at the picture from the outside it, it gave him the support and knowing that he has that support mo moving forward makes a big difference in recovery already um, on that on that um, that whole story there right and um, also you have been able to to support him through this, um, as a parent, knowing what you've been through yourself. Yes. So that already also makes a big difference. And it, and it allows other people to see the possibilities and to see how um, someone who, who, who is afflicted, you know, the wording's always so difficult here, someone who, who right. is experiencing substance, substance use disorder, isn't doesn't do that because they want to do it. It's not something that they that they they just can say, okay, tomorrow I'm I'm giving it up. Some people can, some people can't. And I think us as society need to look at that and say, you know what, you can't stigmatize, stop the labeling, stop the stigmatization. Yes. And let's look at people for who they are and give them the support for who they are. And I know it's difficult as parents to be able to do that because we all know that the addictive behavior is is, is manipulative and that's a whole story on its own, right? So a lot of parents just don't know what to do. There's no support and they just throw up their hands and, and throw him out or whatever they do. So for you to be able to have supported him through this, to, to be able to hold his hand, to, to, to have that experience on the 29th is also an amazing feat. And that's also something that we, we need to showcase right here. So. Agree. Um, uh, uh, you know, those were just the comments I wanted to make before we went into to recovery. And like you were saying, everyone recovers as their own. And we also need to realize that people are people and we all have our own opinions and we all have our own lives. And 
you know, the way people live their lives and the way the people recover is up to them. And whatever works for you, works for you. And no one else has a right to point fingers, you know, rather yeah. look at your own life instead of looking at others. Okay, yes. that's, my, that's my thoughts. I like that. I <laughs> love that. I love that. No, you know, and I, I think, Karina, I think as we move forward, you're going to you're gonna feel where, where I go. And sometimes I may go off here, go off there, because I have so much here that is... I, it's hard to contain. So I'm sitting and I'm writing in books, tablets, paper. No, I mean, it, it's constant. I'm constantly writing on my phone, putting in my notes and I, it just so much. And so I do apologize if I went off script a little bit here, but I just feel so passionate about what I do. I feel so passionate about what I share. It's like if I can share everything in one setting, it would take years with no sleep and just go on running for years, my story and the the events, the circus-like atmosphere that I was involved in in my active addiction. So I just want to be, I just want to be like, hey, I can sit back, me personally sit back and I can laugh at me because with without the humor, without a, a, a fun side to it, and you take yourself a little bit too seriously. Yeah, yeah. You know, I have to have a little bit of laughter in it because it was hilarious. I mean, looking back, me looking at me on the screen, going through all my stuff, this guy's a funny guy. What? <laughs> you know, and, and, and that's how I bring humor to it as well. Um, you know, so, it, it, uh, sorry, hold that thought. I just want to add something. Sorry, Richard. Yes, that's um, okay. That's, an, that's another thing that we need to realize. I think we all take ourselves sometimes too seriously. And life is, you know, life is serious, but it's not really that serious. If we can look back and, and laugh at ourselves, we'll realize how much healing just comes from that. Um, right. So, so I love that you can look back and go like, "What? What was I thinking?" Well, that is really funny, and you know what? I am funny at the end of the day. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank, yeah. thank you for that. Yeah, no worries, no worries. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, it's, you know, it, it's. Um, I, I think, I think being on 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 a sobriety journey, the life, your life choices are are so much clearer, so much better. Yeah. So much color and texture is so much more that vibrant, if you will. The tastes are so much sweeter, greater. Um, just everything, you know? And I love the simple things. I mean, I can sit there. I, I, I mean, for everyone that's looking at my social media, you're going to notice a bunch of plants that are there. I'll see something, and I'll get up there and get a portrait of it. What awes me when I'm out in nature, when I'm walking the desert, I mean, I'm looking at Joshua trees. I'm looking at plants on the ground that I can sit and look at and touch because I'm so amazed yes. that the universe is so beautiful that it created these everything from one's breath to the seed that's planted that grows that will wither if not water, which is a metaphor for someone who's not loved can wither and die. And bringing this, bringing this full circle, you just never know what one does. You just never know, excuse me, you, never, you just never know what one does to another by lashing out at them with mm -hmm. bad, bad intentions and disguising yourself as someone that is different. But yet there's an underlying reason why you wanted to deal with this person because you want to throw trash at them. You want to be able to throw in their past at them that is no longer relevant. And so when we get when we get to that point to where we're comfortable in the way that we are recovering, because you've you've come to terms that you've stepped out of one area, you are now in another. Yes. Yes. Transitioning into a better way of life for you. So you could become a better person, friend, husband, wife, brother, sister, partner, makes no difference. Mm -hmm. It's a three transition phase from the old new future. 
I truly believe that for me, and, and I, I think I mentioned this last time, Karina, was, um, you know, there was a reason why I was put in the places I was put to go through what I went through was to wake up one day, realize that my story is going to help others and my story by me sharing is going to help many across the globe. And it has, and it continues to do so. And I know I was chosen for that purpose because I was strong enough to, to get out of that lifestyle and to change. And I just want to share this, you know, because not everyone's with you when you change. Mm -hmm. You know, not everyone's with you. Not everyone is your fan. Because they're still living in the past. They're still dwelling in the past and the past activity, the past nature of your business. And they don't get over that. And the funny thing is, the one that was put down, talked about, spit on, pushed away, talked about, has now elevated to a different level of, of life, yeah. but yet you're stuck in that. So who, who's who? <laughs> who's who? You're right. And it makes no difference whether it was a, a, a business partner, friend, or family, mother, father, makes no difference. I truly found that the ones that, that support you and love you for who you are that is your tribe. That is your circle. And you never want to leave outside that circle, but you want to build that circle bigger with people that are like-minded, that are on the same path, that have the same thoughts and have the same well wishes and love and respect for others. Yes. And with yes. that said and done by everybody building themselves working on themselves, talking amongst one another, getting feedback of, you know, how am I doing? How are you doing? Maybe you should try this. I do this. One follows the other. Everybody succeeds. And um, that's what I was truly blown away with when I was sitting in that auditorium at, at my son's graduation. I was... looking at 35 men that came in still wondering because they're still fresh and new to recover. I know we've been... Hey there. We're just breaking from the episode for a moment. just want to tell you about something that's really, really exciting. We speak a lot in this podcast about self-worth and self-doubt and self-belief and so I have this very exciting challenge for you because what if, what if you could break down self-doubt and find self-worth and find those treasures within you so that you can show the world your value because you know and find your beauty because it's there. We just need to find it together. So I've created a five-day mini challenge. It's a one-on-one -on -one coaching experience. And together we will work through this and find those beautiful treasures within so you can shine your light to the world. If this sounds like something you're interested in, we've got I've got all the details on the pinned comments below this video. So Thank you for listening, and let's get back to this exciting conversation. Friends forever. Mm -hmm. I use the term of the deer in the headlight look because of the uncertainty of the direction that they were going or where they're at. But they were truly there for a reason to recover, you know? And I just thought I was in the I was in the best setting ever. Was I was seeing change in transition 
And that's the way I sat and, and I thought about it, it was the change in transition. Mm -hmm. So I was to I was to the point where like I could not be happier being in that in that company because that was me many, many years ago when I turned myself into a men's recovery home in the early 90s. So I know that forum. I know that area. And to step back into that, that night on May 29th, wow. It was, uh, it, it, I think everything just came around full circle for me that night. How did it make you feel to go back there? Because, I mean, we know, like, I know this was a, a, a beautiful, um, a beautiful experience for you, but, but we all know, you know, without putting a dampener out, that most people relapse that come out of, out of, um, Re out of recovery, right? Out of rehab. A lot of people relapse. We know those statistics. <coughs> yes. What was it like? What was it like for you to be back there, knowing that you were the one of the ones that didn't relapse because of the support you had, because of who you were, whatever the reason was, and knowing that because of you know that you have a different perspective about how you can support your son to not be one of those statistics. Oh yeah, I. I I, I I hear you and I agree with what what you say and um, this the stats are overwhelming and yes you know for me I just learned I I learned so much because I've learned so much throughout my years of recovery that I I know that I was on a a, a solid foundation I had no doubt I had no worry. And nobody knew. I don't. It, it, to be honest with you, I don't even know how many people know how how long I've been in recovery amongst my 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 son's friends that are in the recovery program. Um, and I wasn't there to talk about me. I wasn't there to talk about my time or what I do. Yeah, this yes. was all about my son. This is all about my son doing his thing. And I sat back as a participant, and I knew what I was getting into because I knew the home I was going into. I knew the auditorium and the audience I was going to be with. And I felt unbelievably so comfortable. I felt honored being there. Mm -hmm. I felt so honored and blessed. Everybody that came up to me, wished me a happy birthday, came up to me and hugged me and says, thank you for coming and, you know, you know, Josh talks so much about you, and I met my son's sponsor. I met my son's mentor. I met my son's. I mean, it, it was, it was his. It was his day, night to shine. I was merely a participant. I was, I was just there in awe. I was just like, are you, are you seeing this? This is amazing. You know. Um. But to be honest, I had no no feelings of anything other than knowing that I'm going to be amongst amongst ones that are in the process of change and to witness that to see that it was like again I, I, I was blessed and honored to be there mm -hmm. I was so grateful to be to be able to walk into those doors and to sit there that was amazing. And to meet everybody that I that I met that were amongst my son's peers, yeah. It was beautiful. Beautiful, Karina. Yes, I love that. And again, like I said uh, before, you, you, because you've been there, you can support your son in a way that you know you needed the support and you can hold his hand and possibly even his peers. I mean, who knows? You don't know what life has, you know, you don't know how things unfold, but um, support each other and know that with your guidance, you'll be having this conversation with him 21 years from now. Right, right, right. You know, and um, I, I think going through 
everything that um, my son went through, of course, I was the one trying to warn him, talking to him, and going through everything with him and through his ups and downs, uh, going through his recovery, going through um, incarceration, um, different levels of lockup as as a as a teen through the youth program, um, all the way to state prison. I got to tell you, you know, it was, um, I had the front seat for that one. Mm -hmm. And I could not and would not change it for the world again. Because I was able to, throughout this whole process, Karina, I would always tell my son, did you know I'm your biggest fan? Did you know I believe in you? I believe in you, even though you don't. You're going to get this. I don't know when. I would ask him, not tell him. I would ask him, why don't you try this? You know, try this way of, you know, of trying to become clean. Um, what What's going to work for you? Because clearly the road you're on is not working for you. Mm, 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 mm. We know that. So I just, going through everything I went through with him, I, I, I wanted to make sure that he understood that I, my love is still there. And I think the only time that I had to separate myself from him was the time when he disrespected me just and I just, I, I had to disconnect. Um, it didn't stop me from going to find him or seeing him in the morning to bring him food because he was homeless at the, at that time. And then after work, I would go find him to bring him some food or bring him something. And I just wouldn't give him any money anymore. But I, I, I want to make sure that if, if you were working with someone who was in recovery makes no difference, your son, your brother, your dad, your mom, whoever it is, there is hope. There is hope in the way that is beyond your comprehension. The universe works in many mysterious ways. A lot of people are religious um, and speak of God. A lot of people are spiritual and speak of the universe. I'd like to think of it as a combined combined effort of all, right? But there is truly a power out there that is way greater than what we can comprehend. That I do know. And I'm just I'm just a person here that experienced something that has something to talk about. I, I don't talk about things I don't know. I talk about things that I've, that I've experienced. I talk about things that I went through and I talk about the things that I'm doing. And for me to share my story, I will share it in a way that people will understand. And again, this is for the, this is for the people. This is, you know, this is for the people. This is for everybody. And I want people to understand that I'm just like you. You're just like me. We are all the same. And what can we do to help each other transition out of the old into the new? And I think if the whole world would think like that on every level, how much of a better place that we can have to live? Yes. Yes. I love the, it. You know? I love that, Richard. Uh, and I think what, what what we see right now, you know, outside, if you look at the news and you look at life in general, there's so much fear um, that's that's just tripled in from society, from the government, from whatever, from whatever that's happening out there. So what's happening is that fear just is infiltrating and is separating us. Instead of us sitting oh, yes. back and finding commonalities and finding the common ground, because we all have common ground, and holding each other's hand and say, you know what, I'm here, I'll support you, I'm here. You know that I'm here, if you need me, I'm here. You know, it's not like saying, hey, I'm here, let me help you, because that doesn't work. No. I, it's like, I'm here, you know, I, my hand is here, if you need, it just, 
if you need someone to talk to, I'm here. And if we lift each other up and we hold each other's hands, and I know this sounds very like kumbaya-ish, but that's just, you know, the common, we can support each other. And with that, we can make a difference in the world because it's all about, fear is, is, is a chain and it's a cage and it's something that yes. we create within ourselves, but society is creating to keep us separate and we need to see it as the bigger picture and come together and know that we can support each other. You know, and love you, each other no matter what, you know, each to their own, no judgment. Well, you know, that's it. it while you're speaking, I it, it just flashing, flashing, break fear, find freedom, break fear, <laughs> find freedom. And this is what this is what you're about. And this is how you you know, this is what it is. And everything that we're doing falls in line with that. Yes, you know, yes, we're trying to yes. break that. We're trying to break that fear of, of, of disconnect, of, 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 of one hating another. Unacceptable, unnecessary. It needs to be, it needs to be washed away. Yes, you know, yes. on the other side of the spectrum, you're finding freedom. You're finding peace within yourself. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm taking it in a way that I feel I read it. It, I, 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 I know how you're you're feeling about it, but I think that the way that people see everything is, yeah, there's a fear in everything. There's a fear in the direction of their life. There's a fear, am I going to make it? There's a fear, am I going to be able to recover? Is a fear of, am I going to die? Or is there a fear that I'm going to be liked? There's a fear, am I going to be loved or can I love? And then you jump over to the other side and you're free. You know, you find the freedom. You finally found the right tools to get you to that other side. And now it's all about sustaining that mm, mm. sobriety. You know, as we speak, even through other times, I'll go through my book and I write things down. There are keynotes that I hear from you, others, or thoughts I'm just, um, it's so important and it's so poignant. Break fear, find freedom. It is so, that is so profound. You know, I, I, I've, I've watched your videos. I've watched your interviews. And the ones that I would see through uh, through mental health and suicide awareness and people that have went to the other side attempted, these are all strong topics. Mm. These are all strong, strong human interest stories that one must see to understand coming from someone who's Row, who's who's ridden that black wave, that black wave of depression, and and how many times I thought of that as a solution, and a lot of people didn't know until I started coming open, coming um, coming clean of where I was mentally, mm. going through my going through my breakdown, and. Um, I, I, I just, I, I, I love how you bring this to the forefront and I want to thank you for that. Uh, I was never, a, I was never ashamed of talking about it. I never talked about it before because I just, I don't know how or why, but I had to break that fear. And now I'm sitting here because I found the freedom because of the sessions and the therapy that I'm going through that is long-term. There is nothing to be fixed short-term. No, no, no. So I'm truly grateful, truly grateful for this. And for me to be able to speak and have a forum to do so on, um, on a program that is so important it means so much to you and it, 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 it means a lot to me to be here and for us to be on our third you know our third podcast and you know we're, we're going to be be able to start trickling these out and getting them out and, and, and l letting the the world see them and i hope this 
video finds you well. Yes. And I hope this message finds you well because you have to see this. You have to really understand that, that there's people like you out there. Me. I'm just like you. Um, yes, and um, thank you, thank you um, for your kind words, Richard. And uh, I, I just want to to also say how the importance of of you also being able to say, um, you know, what I was also through that the, at that dark time, and I also thought about uh, of taking my life. Um, it's 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 such a freeing thing because. Because again, there's stigma around that and there's stigma and then people label you as unstable or whatever it is because mental health is such a huge issue and such a, a sensitive issue right now because of what's happening around us. There's the homelessness, there's, there's everything's just like blowing up in our faces and to have these conversations is so important. So yes. Thank you. Thank you for, you know, saying, well, this is me and I'm okay with me and let's peel back the, the curtain and this is who we are and so that others can see that it's okay. It's okay, you know. People go through stages, but there is support. You're never alone. There is someone out there that, that is willing to listen to you if you're just yes. willing to ask and it's always that big thing it's always so difficult for us to ask for help it's not a sin it's okay to ask for help yes yes absolutely and um you know i mean i like i gotta say again you know i'm i'm always in awe waking up i'm always in awe of being able to speak on a forum like this, or if I go live on Instagram, uh, Facebook, TikTok, whatever it is, whatever message I get out, I feel like that freedom of being able to speak my my mind um, without hurting others. I would love to have that in return to others speaking of their story because everybody everybody has a story to tell. Yes. And everybody yes. has a unique story because we're all individuals and we've gone through different things. There may be similarities, but at the end of the day, that fork in the road comes to a to an to an end and we're all there. It's we're here for a reason. Um and for me, knowing the hundreds and hundreds of times I've relapsed to get me to the point to where the last relapse happened, I knew that there was a sense of clarity at that moment. I knew that there was no other way to do what I was going. There was no other way to change other than the way I knew I could change. And remember that the way I knew I could change, and that was through self help, self motivating. And I felt that was the best way for me. Mm. And I'm going to continue to share that. I cannot be who I cannot be. I can't fall into someone else's box of how they think I should recover. I cannot be anything that they want me to be. I have to be me. And that's another thing that brings the fine that break fear, find freedom. Because people are always in fear of losing a relationship, a business friendship, a friend, or something. So you're always walking that fine line. If I do this, if I do that, if I say this, if I say that, if I vote this way, don't vote this way, I'm gonna yeah, lose a yeah. friend. That's fear. Yes. Then once you truly understand that nobody needs to live in fear of anything, of anyone, That is when you truly find the freedom to be who you are. And I'm just like, wow, this is my freedom right yes. here, right now. Yes. You know? Yes. And, and um, just, I just want to just hold that thought because I just want to go back um, with, free, with fear again. We always, we do, we fear, you know what? 
oh, I have to do this. I have to stay here because if I if I if I if I do this or I say that or if or I, I'm, I'm going to lose that person or I'm going to lose this or I, I, I'm, someone's going to hate me, and we realize that you always always get the thing you fear the most because you're focusing on it, right? So it, it, for me, it's like. Oh, you know what? I, I have to stay in my lane because I'm afraid that if I don't, I'm going to upset someone and then I'll lose them forever. And what happens down the road? You lose them anyway because you're not yourself. You're not true to yourself. And the relationship gets stale and stinky because you're not yeah. being yourself. So yeah. you lose it anyway and it becomes so. I just wanted to add that. Sorry, continue. That's good. That's good. That's so, good. Yes. Yeah. So you have to come back to yourself and know that you are the most important person in your life. And oh. you've got to lo love yourself and value yourself enough to be able to say, you know what, I do deserve um, recovery. I do deserve the love, the love that, that I want to give. I do deserve a good life. I do deserve being me and being okay with me. Yes, yes. Um, you know, and... As we spoke in the past, you know, there was um, I, I think I brought to your attention of, of where I was, where I was at mentally thinking about, um, you know, um, myself at, at, at times where I just felt like sometimes I wasn't worthy enough. I wasn't good yes. enough, yes. you know, and yes. that was that was a that was an in and out struggle throughout. And again, it brings me back that fear that fear of not belonging, that fear of not being accepted, the fear of not being heard. Because I think growing growing up and being around the people that I was around, family or not, you know, I don't think I could have said anything that would have made sense because I was in active addiction. I get it. Mm, 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 mm. But the lack of understanding or compassion for one is truly the most most hurtful to, to one in recovery. It's not like we're asking for you to bend over backwards and do stuff, but understand the fact that we are going through something and we will get through it. I cannot make a promise to you because you want that promise. I cannot make a promise to anyone else because I don't even know if I can keep that promise for me. I've got to cycle through this. I've got to process this. I've got to, I've got to do what I have to do. Well, here's the Here's the kicker, is that there's a season of change for everyone. Everyone has a season of change. That season and that moment of clarity will come to that individual at the right time when the time is right. Nobody knows. Nobody can put a date on it. Nobody can put a timeline on it. It comes when it comes. And talking to my son about this, I was talking to him many, many, many years ago. And I let him know that I would gladly, gladly take, switch lives with you. I would take my life. If, if, if I had to sacrifice me for you, to get out of this mess and, and, and become clean and sober and become that father to your son that you were meant to be, to become a better son to your mother, to become a better brother to your brother and sister, then I would gladly do that. And my answer, his answer was, I can't do that, Dad. I, 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 I got this. Mm. I got this. Really? Because, Dad, I'm not ready yet. And all of a sudden, flashback came back because that's what I said to my mom. Hmm. You know, I want to share this with everybody, share this with you, Karina. I think I was two, three years into my sobriety. Maybe even less, two years into my sobriety. I was working at a tile store in up north. That's where I moved to get out of the, the San Fernando Valley. 
and I met someone up there who worked next door at a bakery. It was his mom's bakery. He was he worked the register. He worked the business, but he was also a film. He was a film student. Hmm. And at that time, we got to talking. He was telling me that he was going to school to finish film. Blah 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 blah. I wasn't. Um, I wasn't doing anything at that time. I, I hadn't gotten into film yet. I I, I didn't meet the. Um, I didn't meet anyone in film yet, and um, I, I had no idea about it. Just okay, that's great, cool. You're doing film, cool. All of a sudden, we're working, we're working, and time goes on. He finished up uh, one of his scripts, one of his movies that he wanted to to make, and um, he told me, he goes, you know, I've been working with uh, Robert Rodriguez, who was one, you know, one of the biggest. He, he's he's, a, he's an actor, director, producer, yes. uh, Mex you know, Latino man, mm. and his brother and. Um, he gave me this script, and uh, the script was called Little Boy Blue. Eddie Bunker was the prison writer who wrote it. So I have one, I have three of the original scripts in my possession. I was reading for the uncle of this young man who was a troubled young man who there was an uncle and aunt that were to take him in. And he was just trouble as a mm -hmm. as as a young teenager. Mm -hmm. All those character flaws in this character. I was the uncle, but my life in real life was dad. The character in the film, the young boy that turned into a man in prison with all the stuff that he went through as a juvenile, through the juvenile court system, through the municipal court system, through the adult system, and then to the prison system, guess what? Life imitated art. That was me and my son in that film. Wow. That, low, that later on in years played in real life. I hang on to that script and I have it wrapped away. will never forget that moment of having, I was doing a screenplay in the kitchen and I'm going through this routine with this young kid, this actor. Little did I know that I would be going through those events in my life down the road with my son. Wow. It was quite, quite incredible. And I, I was just, again, that was my first blessing into the film world because it brought me into another film bro that i um was with the, my with, with with a friend of mine nick who wrote it and you know i that was my first opportunity of doing anything like that and it was it was amazing so that particular time in my life will always be so amazing to 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 look back at you know um yeah again you see um you see the changes like when someone has the courage to go through re recovery it changes everything right so the people yeah. that that were friends with you when you were um when you were using are different and you can't go back there because you're a different person but with that comes all the opportunities and life just seems to open up and um, becomes more and more beautiful as you go down that path with the courage and the support of others um, and, and, and stay clean. So it's a beautiful story. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we'll definitely get, get into that a little bit more because once we, you know, get into another area of, of what I'm doing now, I'll have a timeline with some of the films and all the scripts and the boxes of stuff that I have just going back. And it, it's my little, nobody's interested in this. But it's my little mo it's my little area of souvenirs of what I've done. Uh, like people will put their plaques up of their graduation of what they've accomplished, all their degrees. And you know, I, I'm doing the same thing with just things that I've accomplished in the in film. Um, and I love it, you know. And I feel so 
amazingly excited about getting back into the modeling again. We're just setting up for, you know, two, sh hopefully two shoots this month and getting back into where we were getting to a brand and getting out into the magazines and being able to get through that process again, because I'm ready. I took time off for a lot of things, but now I'm ready again. Um, and that again is exciting and and also like you were saying you know putting up your your degrees and that it's important to celebrate your 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 wins and oh, I yes. Think <clears throat> yes it's so easy to just continue and like I mean with me I I, um, I I published a book okay I published a book who cares let's move no. on to the next thing and then you do the next thing oh that's okay and Whereas it's it's important to to look yes. back and realize how far you've come, and to say, yes. you know what, I've I've accomplished a lot of things, and I've and I've been through a lot of things, which um which makes life richer, but it also allows you to realize that who you are and who you are at this moment, and to realize that we're all unique, and so is our path. So um, that's a beautiful way to end the, the, this, this um, episode, I think. Beautiful. Uh, Thank go, you. Go out there and celebrate your wins. No matter how small you think they are, go back and look at what you've done. Like Richard, like how, many, um, how many magazines have you been on? How many um, photo shoots have you done? And how many movies? But it's not only that. One of the most important things is what happened on your birthday and celebrating your son. That's it. So it's, there's so much to celebrate because life yes. at the end is, is beautiful. Yes. So, thank you, Richard. Thank, thank you, you, Karina. This it's been a, a pleasure. conversation. Thank you it's so been, much. It was great. Thank you, Karina. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, everyone, for listening and watch out for the follow-up. See you Great. soon. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, bye. Oh, remember to share this with everyone, right? And subscribe. Yes, yes. Hit that like <laughs> button and subscribe. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Bye for now. Bye-bye.